While I could give you plenty of straightforward information about the newest large ship being brought to Star Citizen, that's not why you come to this channel, is it? So, today I'm going to give you a little bit of a breakdown on the Crusader Hercules Starlifter, talking a little bit about where it came from and what it takes to get a ship all the way from concept to into players' hands. I'll be using some different materials and resources from uh, back in the day to help you guys visualize the different stages of development in this shipmaking process. And if you like this kind of stuff and want to support me in more ways than just liking and subscribing, you can always hop on over to patreon.com and become a paying member to get videos like these early or benefit from other perks that I offer to my patrons. Regardless, guys, I appreciate you all being here. I hope you learned something and I'd like to thank you for coming to my tomato talk. The Mercury Star Runner was the Star Citizen community's baby, and while it's ridden that hype train into Valhalla, it is still loved and admired across the community. It was not a disappointment as far as I'm concerned, and it looks to be an incredibly useful ship now and in the future. But Crusader doesn't sit still. They look towards the next big thing, and sometimes, just sometimes, bigger is better. In case you haven't been formally introduced, this is the Crusader Industries Hercules Starlifter, and it's primed to be the biggest, most qualified cargo hauler in Star Citizen so far. It comes in three different variants, two of which should be arriving at some point in the next branch of updates, which will fall in April and May. There are plenty of channels that will tell you the details about this ship, and if you're here, you've probably already seen one or two of them. So I'm not going to regurgitate that info for you. You come here for something different. That being said, at 642 SCU for the civilian variant, this is a nicely fortified cargo and vehicle hauler, most likely a go for more of the org types, such as those that might be working in my organization, the Garden Interstellar Initiative, which you can join if you use the link in the video description below. Now, let's look at the history of this ship's development so you can get an idea of how long it currently takes to make a fully detailed and explorable ship the length of a football field. The story all began back in May of 2018. Crusader Industries was a background company, having only introduced one other ship with specific uses and no release date in sight. There was a lot to prove. Immediately, the design that was released was loved by the community, and the identity of Crusader was solidified. This is a very important point to remember when considering this ship. This is the first large ship coming from a new company, and with that comes the responsibilities of new design details, guidelines, and considerations that didn't really exist before. So ships in this situation tend to take a little bit longer than your average creation. The Starlifter is designed to do exactly what the name says. Lift. Um, amongst, amongst the stars. And it took many cues from its older sibling, the Starliner. While avoiding the trap of depending on too many military cues in a ship that will be used for military purposes, but also for civilian ones. The first process was the concept stage. Looking at the original sketches, we can see some very interesting design ideas for the ship. VTOL was very clearly an important point, even though they weren't part of the original design, as were the kind of standalone engines you can get in some of these sketches. This must have been a design guideline for larger Crusader ships, and maybe something we see implemented into the Starliner design as well in the future. The hump of the head, the double wing sort of separated design, and the long slender neck section are indeed callbacks to the Starliner as well though. And even though you'll hear jokes about these ships being JPEGs or pictures or any of that stuff, there is a lot of work and love that goes into concepting this ship inside and out to make sure it fits design guidelines, requirements for the game, and just looks good. I hope there's a way to get some of these art pieces later on because I would love to have a book with all the different companies work in there. 
And after that initial announcement of the ship back in 2018, things were kind of quiet on that front, which normally happens after a ship announcement. It even popped up on the roadmap for a little bit that same year, but was later taken off. It wasn't until February 13th of 2020 that we got to see the first glimpse at very, very early work on this ship. At this stage, the ship is in what's called the white box stage. This is all about design validation, where metrics are set out in a game environment away from just the concept, so that designers can find and remedy issues before the art team gets too deep into the finalized dimensions of the ship. This is a chance for cargo bays to be figured out, landing gear to be finalized, and for the interior design of the ship to be set in stone. You can even see here that things like the circular doors that we will see later were already solidified in the design and intent. At this point, I think it's safe to assume the ship was around one to two months of preliminary work, so let's estimate an in-game start date of mid-January. While the ship saw some mentions here and there in different monthly reports, there wouldn't actually be any visible progress on the ship until April 24th of 2020. And while this was still a white box phase look, there was an incredible difference in detail between these two updates, including some new spaces. Now this work may or may not have been ongoing throughout this entire two month period, but if you look at the progress tracker, you'll see that these ships generally only have a few if not just one person working on them at any given time. So on average, a ship of this size in this situation may spend anywhere from two to three months in the white box phase. Only two weeks after this though, images were released to subscribers showing off some images of the ship in early gray box as well as some later white box phases. This is because various parts of the ship will be in different phases of development simultaneously. Now if the white box phase was the point at which all teams can sign off on a segment and say this is ready to go into production, the gray box phase is the main point at which the artists come back in and do a lot of the heavy lifting on the geometry. Building very close to final geometry with chamfers, custom normals, and other specific vertices based practices to raise the quality of the shape of the ship. Rudimentary animations are already completed for things like ladders, elevators, and landing gear. Weapons are placed, components are solidified, and the function of the ship is implemented almost to the point at which a player will get their hands on it. This stage can be incredibly long as we'll see here, and requires a lot of work from the ship teams. This is also the point at which a ship may deviate a bit from the concept or grow a bit larger than expected, which happens actually quite a bit. As the months progressed, we continued to see monthly report mentions of the ship, along with screenshots released to subscribers showing progress being made. The gray box stage was coming along great, as the design and feel of the ship really started to come together, with scale being a focus as well as the difference between the current state of the ship and what we had seen prior. This went on for months, and while there were little small pockets of hype here and there, other things were happening including the launch of the Mercury Star Runner, Crusader's premier first ship launching into the game. As the new year started in 2021, we were treated to the state of development following the ship again, with some looks at the lighting states of the ship. We got to see what it looked like in the three different lighting states that the ship would see, Auxiliary, Emergency, and Fully Lit. These details are generally hashed out further down the life cycle of development. And while lighting is initially done in gray box, final passes are made in the final art stage as well, which was also mentioned in the monthly report. Since then, there haven't been any updates, but two of the three ships in the series look primed to release sometime in the 3.13 update branch though this is still tentative at the time of filming as they have yet to be confirmed in the next patch. And with a cycle from the concept already being done to white box to gray box to final art, 
It looks like the in-game segment of development for a first-time large ship from a new company can be about 15 months. What's interesting is that if you take what this ship is, look at the time it took, and then consider it's not exactly that important considering Squadron 42, which is the main driver of progress, it seems there's a lot that can be done in a very short amount of time when it comes to the ship pipeline. 15 months is not a long amount of time considering all of the moving parts in the company right now. And it certainly presents an exciting time for Crusader and cargo hauling fans as the largest ship in both categories thus far. And while the cargo system is kind of not great right now, I really hope that we can see an improvement on it in the next couple of updates so that we can take advantage of having a ship like this for that profession. There are quite a few conclusions that one can take from these findings, but I'll leave those up to you to decide. I hope that this information was able to give you more insight into the Hercules Starlifter, as well as the general development process of ships in Star Citizen. They've really polished the development pipelines for these ships, being their current main source of revenue. And while I'm not one to spend money on ships outside of the giveaways that I host here in the video description and over on Twitch, I do find it impressive and hope they can apply the same efficiency to everything in game over time. What do you think of the ship? Is it exciting to you? I know many of my viewers look forward to seeing it in game, but what most are you looking for when it comes to this ship? The multi-crew possibilities, the armed transport vibe, the expansion of Crusader? Let me know in the comments below and feel free to subscribe to the channel to help support me and continue to get more content. You can also become a paying member over on Patreon if you want to take that one step further, where you can for as low as a dollar a month get things like monthly summaries, early videos, and additional cinematics. It would support me and my family, and I'd be very grateful for it. Either way guys, I appreciate you coming to check the video out, and I'll see you in the next one.